Welcome folks to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host Seishu and I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and a creative business. Today's guest is Jen Wong, who is a photographer, a California-based photographer uh, who does weddings and portraits and she's known as a fine art photographer. In addition to running her own workshops, Jen is also a highly sought after speaker and she's going to be speaking at Silk Inspire from October 6th through the 10th in Goa, India. I'm so excited to be with her in Goa, talking to her perhaps in person and definitely listening and taking notes. Jen, thanks for joining us today on the show. You're so welcome. So happy to be here. Jen, uh, you know, uh, you're now a Californian. You started out in New York uh, and, you know, I was born in New York. So I used to live in California, so I love that connection already. Talk to us a little bit uh, about your journey, though, as a photographer. How did it start? What have you been sort of doing in terms of a progression from, uh, from the day you started to think about, oh, I'm going to be a, a, a photographer? What did you think? What, do, what, are, your, what are your thoughts? Well, to be honest, um, when I first graduated college, I wasn't a photographer. I loved photography. I knew that it was a hobby and a passion, and I love art. Um, but I was working in advertising and marketing, and um, I just it wasn't for me. And I I just felt very suffocated in the corporate world. Um, and at that time, you know, everyone had a job after college. Everyone, you know, went and got a nine to five. Um, and for me, it just didn't work out. And I've always been kind of stubborn my whole life. So I just thought there had to be another option. So I started shooting events on the side and I started my wedding photography business in 2008. So I shot my first wedding then and my work was absolutely horrendous. And I look back on it and, you know, it's just cringeworthy. I would never show anyone a single picture from those years, but it did kind of, it still reflects my passion for, business and for creating a lifestyle that's, you know, that works with me and my family and um, my personality. So from the very beginning, I knew I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to kind of take control of my own life. And um, weddings at that time in 2008 were kind of these cheesy affairs and they really weren't very inspiring to shoot. But you still made money, you still paid the bills, and I kind of took 2008 through 2000, 2012, I would say, to build the bulk of my business um, and my name. Um, so luckily for me, in 2008, 2009, that's kind of when Style Me Pretty, One Sweat, all of those blogs really started growing. So I find myself very lucky because um, at that time, I was featured on all these blogs, and it wasn't like my work was so overwhelmingly good, but I had a lot of passion, I had a lot of drive, and I started booking more and more clients. Um, and that's when I started realizing, you know, it's not just about going to a wedding, taking pictures and capturing whatever happens in front of you. For me, a lot of it is really controlling and directing the wedding itself and bringing a lot of my own kind of um, styling to the wedding. So from 2012 to about now, that's really when I started creating my personal style and my personal process of shooting. So a lot of that has to do with shooting film. And it's not just the fact that I shoot film. That's not the reason that my images look the way that they do. Although it has a lot to do with kind of um, the colors and the contrast and things of my um, and things that you find in my photography. But film really, I think, teaches you how to be a better shooter. And I think that's really what drives me to be a better photographer. So. Every year, even now, I feel like I can improve with every single wedding. Um, and I think that that's important to always keep in mind while you're growing your business is that there's no end point, really. There's no, I started here and I ended here. Right. You, Everyone starts somewhere right. terrible. And then people who are successful end up, you know, just continuing to develop and never feeling like that they've reached a point where they're happy you know, 100% happy with what they've achieved. Um, so at this point, uh, you know, it's 2017. So um, it's already almost nine years in. And um, I love my business. I finally figured out like, why it's taken nine years, but I finally figured out what it is about my business that I love. And um, it's really the lifestyle and being able to 
constantly improve my own craft and provide memories for people that are really meaningful and significant um, and living a really wonderful life with my family where I have time with them. So, so many questions, uh, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things straight off the bat is uh, I love the I love what you say about film being so uh, important in terms of creating a discipline in, in oneself and learning mm -hmm. the craft. I love that. Uh, what is it that drew you to film and what is it that keeps you in film and obviously when you photograph with the, with the digital SLR uh, camera you can you can see the photographs right in the back of the camera and you know you've got the shot and you move on to the next thing and you can deliver those photographs rather quickly for the film you have there's a bit of a bit of a, a waiting game for the client as well right mm -hmm. how do you how do you I mean the questions in my head are all over the place but how do you figure out that the clients are going to be okay with that, number one. Number two, obviously they understand and expect that's what they're, they're going to get from you. Um, what's, what, well, how did your, your, your film slash style sensibility all come together? Um, so I think that film in itself really aligns itself with my own personal aesthetics. Um, I really love simplicity. I really love um, beautiful composition. I really love fine art and art history. Um, I love, uh, you know, classical paintings and things like that. And um, something that I always say to people is, you know, when you look back, when you go to museums, like I was just in Italy, I went to the Uffizi Museum, and you look at the portraits, you know, an artist would spend months on one portrait of one family, and they would start with this one pose, and they would finish, and it wasn't like... 2000 paintings of the family in different formations, you know, and trying to get different angles. So, um, what I realize is that people really just want one really good photo, you know, and a lot of my clients say that they always say like, I just want one good photo I can put on my wall. So what are you doing with 15,000 images from a wedding when you could really be focusing your energy on creating one perfect image? Um, and of course at weddings, I'm shooting more than one photo. But I take that kind of philosophy and I apply it to my work. Um, so, for example, if you're shooting a bouquet, and I've seen people do this, where they put it on a chair, and it's great, and they take one picture. Then they take 15 more photos of the same exact pose, bouquet, everything. And I just don't understand what those other 14 photos are there for. So something I ask myself is, you know, what's the purpose behind this image? And um, why does it exist? And if there's really no point for it to exist and no purpose, then there's really no reason to have spent time on that. You could have been creating another moment or another image. Um, so the philosophy, philosophy behind film is something that really helps me focus my work and I think in general makes everyone a better photographer because you're not just click a click. You're really thinking. You're very, very, um, in, what's the word? It starts with I. Uh, intentional you're very intentional with every single image and that's what makes a good photographer um so in terms of like getting images back and the time it takes uh, usually you know for even for digital shooters i find that they're delivering around the same time that i am for weddings um they're going through a lot more time editing their images than i am so let's say yes there are some photographers who can like do overnight edits um, but if you're editing a full wedding, you're going to be working on, you know, that wedding for maybe two weeks if you're a digital shooter, I think. Um, I really wait two weeks to get my film back and then I'm done editing my, you know, weddings in less than two or three hours. And that includes not only delivering the final files, but also like marketing, creating editorial selects, um, everything that I have to do after a wedding. Um, so I'm finding that the time invested in film, there's a lot less time. Um, but mostly why I shoot film is really just for the images that I create and the look. So my clients, they want those types of images, they want that look, and they're willing to wait because it's really not that much longer and they're getting the quality that they want. Awesome, awesome. Great, great response. Um, given all that you've just said, is there a time when you ever pick up a digital SLR or a digital camera and use it? Not, not often. Not often. I have, okay. um, 
I have the Mark II, the Canon Mark II, and the Mark III. Um, when I'm shooting, I usually have assistants who will be shooting some digital backup. Okay. Um, but normally that is not used unless I really need it. Gotcha. Um, and I find that digital color doesn't match film color very well. So then you have kind of a two kind of styles in one. And I'm very controlling about the type of work that gets out. And so I don't want there to be this different look amongst my photos. So a lot of my digital, I will actually shoot in monochrome mode okay. if I have to. Awesome. Let's shift our gears a little bit to find out a little bit more about what you're going to be teaching us at Silk Inspire. That's yeah. Goa, October 6th through the 10th. What's going to happen? So uh, my idea really is to teach a little bit about how I style and curate um, my images and my shoots and what makes my kind of portrait shoots different from other photographers and the extra work that I put in. Um, so obviously, you know, I shoot film and I will talk a little bit about that for sure. But um, I don't think that film is the answer for everything. But I do think that the philosophy behind it is really important, whether you're a digital shooter or a film shooter. Um, and especially for digital shooters, I want to teach them to really be more intentional about their work, to not click that shutter button so many times, know that they got the shot, stop checking the back of the camera, and you know maybe even put some masking tape over the back of the camera and just not look at it and really focus on what's in front of them. Um, and then I think a big part of what I do, a lot of photographers do not do, which is when a client books me, uh, let's say for an engagement shoot, um, I don't just show up on the day and time and start shooting away. Um, a big part of it is managing all the little details about that shoot. So, of course, timing is very important. Most photographers, you know, they will manage the timing. Um, and also um, location. Most photographers will, you know, pick out the location. Um, but for me, a lot of it is giving them a bigger story uh, to that engagement shoot. So not just the same photos over and again of them kissing and hugging in front of a tree or anything like that, but um, delving into what makes them a couple, what makes their relationship special, and then styling a shoot around that. So when it comes to attire, location timing, um, you know, it can be indoors, it can be outdoors. Um, but if they love going to coffee together, then, you know, bringing that into the shoot. If they love horseback riding, figuring out how to bring that into the shoot and really taking the next step to make sure those images are very special for that pers pers uh, unique client um, and uh, creating a mood board and all that kind of stuff. So I, I feel like in India, and this is, I don't know the Indian market very well, but I think a lot of it is very similar to what the US was a few years ago, which is you show up, you shoot whatever's in front of you, and you don't change anything. And when I go to a wedding or a photo shoot, I change everything. So when I'm at a wedding, I'm moving furniture around, I'm moving the tablescapes around, I'm bringing my own styling tools, um, and I'm making it into an even more beautiful version of itself. So if a cake is in a dark corner, I usually move the cake. Most people just shoot it in the dark corner because that's where it is. But I'm very, very hands-on and I go in and I make all those changes. So I kind of want to talk about that and give people kind of the inspiration and the courage to go in and say, you know what, I'm not just here to observe. I'm here to go in and insert myself and change things so that I can make the best picture that I can. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, what are your personal expectations of India? Have you been to India before? I have never been to India before. Okay. I'm very excited, though. I don't have any expectations. I just uh, I love going to a new place and just seeing what's in front of me. Awesome. And are you taking your yeah. family with you? Uh, just my husband. He usually assists me, and he usually comes and uh, helps me out with all my workshops and things like that. And not, neither of us have been to India, so this is going to be great. Fantastic. Fantastic. We're yeah. looking forward to it, uh, Jen. It sounds like it's going to be just the right thing for the Indian market in a way because uh, as you probably have already guessed the, the influx of digital photography is huge in India uh, folks are uh, doing some amazing things with digital photography but uh, mm -hmm. I think from from an old school guy like me I who started his life in film photography and mixing chemicals in the darkroom I know exactly what you're talking about it slows you down to really thinking about what is in front of you and I think that's a great message to uh, to anybody who's listening in and who's going to be at, at Silk Inspire. You're going to get more of that from Jen. Jen, thanks for thanks so much for your time today. You're so welcome. Thank you. See you in Goa. Take care. Okay, Bye. thanks. Bye.